So China says the coronavirus is not from Wuhan. They say it's probably from the United States or Italy. But could this be true though? Could this be from Italy though? That is what I would like to examine in this video. But first, uh, let's begin with uh, where we are at right now. This is the John Hopkins Center. Uh, we are hitting 500,000 and 21,000 deaths. And as, as part of some good news, probably uh, 100,000 have recovered. So that is very good news uh, for many people. Most of the world is now affected. I think the, the regions that are not affected is uh, some countries here in Africa like Botswana, Malawi and, and somewhere here, probably uh, uh, Western Sahara, a, a country you probably don't know. But uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the Chinese started to change their tune on some things. So this guy, Li Jian Zhao, <coughs> in, in Chinese, in Mandarin, ZH is, is a J sound. So he retweeted a tweet from an American mother who says, well, probably the coronavirus has been in America for quite some time now. And that was him only doubling down on what he had earlier said that uh, the, the virus was probably brought to China by some American soldiers who went there for some military games. Now this is a huge, huge paradigm shift from what uh, the Chinese have, have uh, said before. Remember, uh, the, the doctors and the, 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 the head of the CDC in China and the officials there were, were, were not shying from saying that the, the virus came from the seafood market, for example, from this video. Officials believe the virus originated from a market where wildlife is traded illegally. From what we can now see, the origin is the wild animals sold in the seafood market. This wild animal virus is adapting as well. This fits and uh, that was the official version for most of uh, the uh, earlier, earlier uh, days of January when this, when this virus was raging. But with with this, uh, this was a paradigm shift. So many ambassadors, uh, Chinese ambassadors on Twitter, started uh, pushing this theory. Uh, first it was the U.S., but then it became uh, Italian. So this is from Quartz. Uh, it, it covers China very, very fairly. I think it's got leanings with India. So... Um, an Italian doctor was on, on was interviewed and he said, oh, we probably saw something like this uh, here in Italy for some time uh, last year, I think that's what he said. And the Chinese have taken that to push their theory that it's definitely not from Wuhan. So this is what uh, the, da the Daily Mail was uh, saying here. And that professor... That that Italian man is uh, some some guy called uh, Remuzi. I can see that he's got two Z's here, like he's like in pizza. Uh, and he said, "Oh yeah, we we probably had uh, this virus for months." And that statement that he said has been pushed around Chinese social media, and and some some Chinese now literally believe that the virus is definitely an import. So, could it be from Italy though? I think uh, it's not from Italy because um, of a few things. Let's start with uh, the exponentiality factor. This is my number one thing. This is from Reuters, obviously. Uh, if the virus appeared in Italy, so uh, we, let, me, let me take you back here. W when did he say? Uh, as early as November. So this Italian man said that we probably had the coronavirus in Italy as early as November. But we also know that the coronavirus uh, grows exponentially. This is given. And uh, if it was November, this is 100 days since it started. This is the current running theory. If it was not 100 days, it was November, this zero would be way back there. And the cases, which would double every six days, would be way past the 1 million. And I'm not even a mathematician, I can just see. So, unless there's been a mutation, 
that appeared around this time here when the cases started appearing in Wuhan, then uh, this this theory does not hold because uh, the cases that we have now reflect a trend that seems to indicate that uh, this thing started at at the beginning of uh, this year or just before that, not uh, not back in November. At least for Europe, that is. At least for Europe. And this is true for uh, all the other countries that are involved. So we have mainland China. If you take it from uh, day zero, it's the trend is okay. But here, they cut it off because of the massive, massive uh, sh lockdown that happened in, in Hubei province. And this is Italy, the one we're talking about. The data has now changed. This is from a few days back. And this is uh, Iran. Iran also had uh, the same problem. Now they are only stemming uh, their cases. So that means the from from what we are looking at here, the graphs, even in South Korea also, they are bending that graph, flattening it because of the lockdowns. Italy was late to the party. And, and uh, this all seems to auger well with the theory that day zero was uh, the day that it uh, blew up in Wuhan. And my next theory is uh, the obituary pages in in the uh, Italian newspapers. So if if you go back to twenty fourth uh, of February, there were only two uh, dead people of <laughs> in the newspaper. Dead people that were, were had obituaries published in the newspaper. That number has been ticking up uh, in tandem with the. Uh, growth of uh, coronavirus cases in Italy as of March 22 there was this much but maybe this data is not representative enough so we go to here so this is February 29th there were two pages okay you can see most of the people are uh, quite old uh, from the pictures and this is Saturday March 21st this is just an explosion of deaths so why are so many Italians dying now and um, compared to this time uh, not 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 so long ago if the virus had been raging in Italy since November uh, this would also be huge because this seems to be like a normal death rate for a city given uh, given normal diseases, not one that has been introduced recently. So this is another huge, huge uh, indicator that that uh, the virus has recently appeared in Italy. So uh, this is th theory number two. And uh, number three, uh, it is uh, uh, all the major, all the major publications seem to agree that this thing uh, came from Wuhan. Now, unless the New York Times, the Reuters, John Hopkins, the, the, the Imperial College of London, so this is a beautiful visualization from the New York Times, which uh, traces the cases, the first known cases, they actually highlighted it. I, I did not do that. So they said many first known cases clustered along the market in Wuhan. Now, they, they also, it, and, and from that, from the dozen cases that uh, that moved from Wuhan, this thing blew up, and as you can see, it was until December thirty first that they alerted the World Health Organization. So, uh, from the first day that they had uh, these problems and uh, the, the alerting the WHO, uh, so many people left Wuhan. So many people left Wuhan and. Uh, here it is, 175,000 people left Wuhan just in one day. Uh, it seems to give credence to the fact that uh, this virus comes from uh, Wuhan. You can see that uh, there, there, South Korea was leading. Uh, here, obviously, is the USA, and at this time, Trump is uh, playing it down. They are not testing, and the virus is growing uh, here. And then we have uh, Iran and Italy, uh, they were actually... So, uh, South Korea has been doing a lot of testing and they did the lockdown. So you can see it receding, uh, Iran 
uh, is here it was not doing much but for some reason the, the cases were not that much but Italy uh, blew up it stayed in number one well, only second to China and then uh, along came Germany also exploded France also exploded Spain uh, is, is doing really fantastic right now in terms of cases but watch uh, the top uh, countries that are leading in, in, in terms of this thing here and I will, I will explain my theory around this later but at least you have an idea of what is happening and uh, and uh, there goes Italy so for example they, they they went to a village in Italy and they tested everyone in that village and they found uh, so much okay so there goes the the US is in number two right now and I think in a few days it will surpass uh, the Italian so this was up to uh, 25 March today is the uh, 26th of March so you, you can see what's happening here so from China you can see that uh, it, it went everywhere if the virus was from Italy uh, Africa here would have a lot of cases this part would have a lot of cases via Italy via UK because uh, it's got a lot of uh, uh, coronial roots in this part but we only have very few cases here right now number four we can trace that is uh, from Wuhan by looking at uh, this so this is a Google search uh, into the top destinations for Chinese tourists where do they go so the the, the most Chinese tourists go to Thailand, they go to Malaysia, Indonesia, in Asia, Japan and uh, South Korea. But what about Europe? So I did a, you know, simple search. You have Spain, you have France, you have Germany, you have the United Kingdom, Italy and Russia. And if you, if you go back to, if you go back to that video that uh, we, we just watched, you will see that... Uh, uh, these countries are featuring very high uh, Italy is number one and Russia so why is Russia miss missing from that video because Russia was I think the second country to do uh, to close their borders to, to, with, with China after North Korea so the, and they were very serious they were uh, dep they, they actually said we would deport some Chinese so you can understand why Russia has uh, reduced numbers but everyone who receives a lot of visitors from the uh, from China has a lot of cases that includes New York I think so from Wuhan it spread everywhere uh, but so here's the the theory that I talked about though uh, Africa is here with very little traffic from Wuhan very little traffic most of the traffic was to South Asia and Australia North America, South Korea and Japan and yes Europe so and if you go to Europe Milan is right there and you know you know the rest of the story so my theory is that this thing has followed certain patterns that seem to indicate that it did come from Wuhan as uh, as per this graph that we saw right here if we're going to believe in the statistics that we can currently see in conclusion i would like to uh, use this video from the new york times as my conclusion it is titled how china is reshaping the Chinese government has one of the most extensive propaganda networks in the world inside the country, but it also aggressively works to influence how it's perceived outside its borders. China has invested billions into bolstering its image abroad. Its state-run news outlets push out messages in English around the clock. You're watching CGTN live in Beijing from my room, Washington D.C. And its diplomats have flocked to Twitter in the last. Last year. But what happens when this massive PR apparatus has to do major damage control? We analyzed thousands of tweets from Chinese state media and official accounts and found three dominant messages China wants to project to the world. 
here's what we learned. A novel coronavirus hit the Chinese city of Wuhan in January. Early whistleblowers were silenced. People were angry about a government cover-up. But in the majority of tweets we analyzed, state-owned publications pushed a much more optimistic view, promoting what they said was an effective response. They are sharing videos like this. The Chinese Communist Party refers to this as positive energy, only focusing on the bright side of an issue. China did take drastic measures to try and stem the outbreak. But that's the only story China wants the world to see. And state media is eager to run praise from foreign experts to back up China's successes. It's a remarkable uh, response that's being organized in China to contain the virus. One tweet from state media that did reveal Chinese citizens' discontent, <laughs> it was quickly deleted. Once the virus spread across the world, China started positioning itself as being at the forefront of fighting the pandemic. It presented itself as a partner, a grateful recipient, and more recently, a selfless leader, highlighting large donations from Chinese companies and the government. China hasn't typically disparaged other countries' responses to the virus, with one exception the United States. President Donald Trump has been accused of denying, downplaying and outright rejecting the concerns over the COVID-19 outbreak. Another thing we noticed are Chinese outlets disputing the origin of the virus. It all started in late February with a renowned Chinese epidemiologist. Around the same time, the CDC reported the first case in the United States with an unknown origin. A screenshot of the announcement incorrectly translated in Chinese, began to trend online and was untouched by Chinese government censors. And a high-ranking government spokesperson actively pushed disinformation about where the virus came from. A government giving an optimistic spin to bad news is not unique. We want to go big, go solid. The country is very strong. We've never been so strong. But the scale of the Chinese propaganda machine is. And it's clear that it's being deployed to try and tell the world a new story about the coronavirus pandemic. <laughs>